All right, uh, so here we go. Um, so basically, uh, this video is an extension of the last one. Uh, we're going to do some more equilibrium problems, but the main thing here is that we are uh, no longer going to assume that our, our board or you know whatever the object is is massless. Okay, um, and so doing that requires that you understand the concept of center of mass and that you can then you know solve problems using it. All right, so here we go. So. Suppose you had something like this. So we've got this 20 kilogram board. It's four meters long. All right, the board is sitting on a support 0 0.75 meters from one end. So this little distance here is 0 0.75 meters. The whole board is four meters long. Okay, so you can see that if Roy wasn't there, then the board would blink, would fall over that way, right? Okay. Um, you know, just by kind of common sense, right? So what's happening here is Roy is applying a force to the board to prevent it from moving, all right? Uh, to prevent it from rotating, all right? And so the question is, how much force is Roy going to exert and in which direction, okay? Um, and then B, how much force is exerted by the support, okay? So worth noting here, there's there are two unknown forces here, right? We don't know how much force Roy is going to exert. We also don't know how much force the support is going to exert. Okay, so anyway, before we can solve this, we have to learn about what's called center of mass. All right, so center of mass, uh, it's an object's average position of mass. Uh, so usually, most of the problems we've done so far, we've dealt with an object as a particle. You know, like, you know, I might say Mr. Hecker throws his coffee mug up in the air, right? And we don't worry about the fact that it spins and wobbles and turns and blah, 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 blah. We treat it as a particle, and it just, like, you know, moves through space as a particle. Okay? Um, but real objects are not particles, okay? So, but it turns out that the center of mass, COM, of an object is important for two reasons. One, forces applied to an object at the center of mass uh, will cause the object to move exactly the same as it would if it was a particle. In other words, it's not going to rotate. If you push an object at its center of mass, um, it doesn't create any additional rotation, all right? Uh, secondly, gravity can always be treated as a force that acts at the center of mass. Okay, so let me show you a couple quick things here. Imagine a nice square object. Okay, you can see this little crosshair here. That represents the center of mass of the object. And so you can see that it's just as tall as it is wide. So the center of mass is at the, at the center of this little blue object here. Okay, now uh, if I make the object bigger, the center of mass moves over. Okay, right? Now, suppose that I do this, suppose I put a big tail on it, okay? So now what we can see is the top part of it here has much more mass than the bottom part, and so the center of mass is higher up, right? So this dot represents, it's, it's a literally a weighted average. It's the average position of the object's, um, average position of the object's mass, okay? So what we can do though is this. So suppose I take this thumbtack and I, stick the thumbtack in this thing, okay? And then I release it. So what's gonna happen is this thumbtack represents my pivot point, right? Okay, and if I let go of it, so right now, you know, something must be holding this, but if we let it go and let gravity do its work, what's gonna happen is gravity pulls down on it, okay? And it actually produces a torque, right? So my lever arm would be this. Whoa, that is not at all what I wanted to happen. My lever arm would be this and gravity is going to pull down and it's going to produce a torque all right and watch what happens so when i push go it keeps rotating until the center of mass is directly beneath my pivot point because now gravity is no longer producing a torque right okay and this works for any pivot point okay if i put move my thumbtack to here it'll still work, okay? Center of mass is right beneath the pivot point, okay? Um, even if you do this, it still works, right? Center of mass is directly beneath the pivot point, okay? So, um, it also turns out that you can treat any projectile as an object if you uh, consider its position at the object's center of mass, okay? So, so 
So here we've got a tennis racket that's just being thrown through space, okay? And so the first thing he's going to do here is he focuses on the end of the handle. So he's going to mark the path that the end of the handle follows. And it's very complicated, right? It follows this crazy, wonky path, kind of, you know, zooming through space, right? But if we do it again, if we throw that same tennis racket, but this time we focus just on the center of mass, it follows a nice parabolic path exactly according to the rules of projectiles that we learned, OK? All right, and then if you watch the end of the handle from the frame of reference of the center of mass, the end of the handle just follows a perfect circle, okay, at a constant velocity because there's no additional torque being applied, okay? So, long story short, when you're dealing with uh, a torque problem where you've got an object that has weight, what we do is we treat the object as being a point particle located at the center of mass. Okay, and that's exactly what we're going to do on this previous slide. All right, so I, I guess I didn't say this. So if, if your object is uniform, you know, like a meter stick, then your center of mass is located directly at the center. Okay, and the reason that this balances right now is because the force of gravity, we can treat it as pushing down right here, but now my lever arm is zero, right? If the force of gravity pushes down, or pulls down, I guess I should say, if we think of gravity pulling down right here, and my pivot point is at my here, then the distance between my force of gravity and my pivot point is zero, it doesn't produce any torque, and so it balances, okay? So, oops. All right, so let's solve this thing, all right? So, for my, uh, my thingamajig here, we've got, why did I just erase that? We've got three forces, okay, um, two of which we know. So first of all, the 20 kilogram board is four meters long. Um, it doesn't explicitly say it. Let's assume that the board is uniform. Otherwise, we wouldn't know where the center of mass is. So if the board is uniform, then the center of mass is going to be right here. So I'm going to mark it with a little x. I will always use an x to represent the center of mass, okay? And so the idea is I can pretend that all of gravity is focused right there at that one point. Okay, and so then my force of gravity is going to be just 20 times 9.8, so 196 newtons. Okay, and then I've got two unknown forces. I've got this upwards force from the force of the fulcrum, and then some sort of force from, uh, from Roy. Okay, um, and so a little bit of logic here shows us that if Roy didn't do anything, then the board would, you know, kind of flip over. So Roy must be pushing down on it. Uh, if that's not obvious, hopefully the math will show us the same thing, okay? Now, let me... All right, so this is a problem in which we have two unknown forces. Um, we do know all of our distances, though. So I've already labeled the, dis the um, you know, the 0.75 meters and the 4 meters. What I haven't done is I haven't labeled this distance, which is just 2 meters, right? Okay? So because we've got two unknown forces, we're going to start with net torque. So we're going to pick a pivot point. So... Probably the most common sense point to pick our pivot point would be where the fulcrum is. But remember, there are only two good choices here. You can either pick your pivot point to be where Roy's force is, or you can pick your pivot point to be where the fulcrum is. All right. Um, and like I say, I'm guessing that for most of you, your intuition is going to want to make this the pivot point. So we'll do that. So our pivot point is going to be where the fulcrum is. Okay. So here we go. So our net torque around point P is going to be the torque from Roy plus the torque from the gravity of the board, plus the torque from the fulcrum, okay? So, and we want this all to be zero. So zero equals the torque from Roy. Well, let's see. Roy is 0.75 meters from the fulcrum, uh, and he's exerting some amount of force. So 0 0.75 meters, 0 0.75 meters times the force of Roy, plus the torque from gravity. Oh, we got to figure this out, don't we? Well, let's see. So we know the, <laughs> the torque from gravity, our lever arm is going to be the length of this little bit right here, right? So to me, it looks like that's going to be 2 minus 0.75, right? So I think that's going to be 1.25 meters times the force of gravity, which is 1.96. Nope, sorry, it isn't. It's 196. Oh, man. 
96 newtons plus the torque from the fulcrum, which is just going to be zero, right? Okay, so the fact that I don't know that force from the fulcrum becomes a non-issue, right? So when we simplify this, oh, I didn't check my signs, did I? Let's see, should either of these torques be negative? Let's see. Um, I don't know for Roy, because I've got my unknown there, but it looks to me like the torque from gravity that's causing it to spin clockwise, which is negative. All right, so I am looking at 0 equals 0.75 force of Roy minus 245. So add to both sides, you get 245 equals 0.75 times the force of Roy. Divide both sides by 0.75, and you get an answer that I don't know. 245 divided by 0.75, oops, 245 divided by 0.75 gives us 326.6 newtons, all right, and uh, it's got to be downwards to cancel out the clockwise torque from the board, right? So there's the force of Roy. I guess we can go ahead and put a negative on it because it's downward, right? And now we can use the fact that our net force has got to be zero to find the force of the fulcrum, right? So net force is force of Roy plus force of gravity plus force of fulcrum. So zero equals negative 326.6 plus negative 196 plus the force of the fulcrum. And the force of the fulcrum then ends up being 522. 0.6 newtons. Okay? So that's how you do that. So basically, long story short, if it's not too late, uh, to calculate these problems, to do these problems where you've got a center of mass, where you have to deal with the center of mass, rather, you, you basically just treat the weight of the object as one additional force acting on the, on the object. Okay? And you position that force at the center of mass of the object. All right. Now notice, if I'd said that this board was not uniform, then I would have had to have told you where the center of mass was, you know? And maybe I would say, you know, this board is heavier at one end than the other, and the center of mass is one meter from the end of the board, or whatever. And then you would solve it the same way, okay? All right, so there you go, center of mass.